This channel has been known to trigger leftists and trolls alike. Proceed with extreme caution. You have been warned. Police are looking for 18-year-old Justin Atwater. He is facing charges connected to this shooting that happened here yesterday. Today, police are telling us that he is connected to a crime in care. This doesn't seem to be bothering you. I know, I know, but it's from this angle, you can't see the suspect, but police say four other cameras can and capture these very clear pictures. This all started in the drive All of a sudden, everybody started running outside, and I asked them what was going on. They said somebody was shooting up at the front. So you no, I, beat him, him, I, what did you do? I beat him up my fist, my fist, I beat him down, I beat him up, that's what killed him, my fist. Policemen did everything they could, they did everything right, and it just wasn't good enough anymore. Damn! Now you too censor. Now you too censor. I'm mad as hell right now. Yes, I am. Your discretion is advised. Mama Black. This program contains language and sequences some viewers may find disturbing. Right! 24 hours after a shooting at the Durham Walmart, police are still looking for that teenage suspect. And new tonight, it appears that Justin Atwater has a lengthy criminal history. Our Derek Lewis is digging deeper tonight. And Derek, tell us what you found out so far. Russ Angela Durham police are looking for 18-year-old Justin Atwater. He is facing charges connected to this shooting that happened here yesterday. Today, police are telling us that he is connected to a crime in Cary. Witnesses described chaos at this Walmart on New Hope Commons Drive Wednesday. All of a sudden, everybody started running outside, and I asked them what was going on. They said somebody was shooting up at the front. Linda Tennant works here. I just ran with them on out to the grass. Police are looking for 18-year-old Justin Atwater. He's charged with assault with a deadly weapon and attempted murder. Today, Durham Police tells CBS 17 that Atwater is the same person facing charges for a 2016 home invasion in Cary. As police continue looking for Atwater, shoppers are recovering from an experience they never thought they'd have. In any public place, it could potentially happen. You just wouldn't expect it to happen while you're there. Now, police were giving a description of a vehicle they believe Atwater left in yesterday, but after they stopped that vehicle matching that description yesterday, they found out that the people inside that car were not connected to the shooting. Coming up at 6, I'll have more on the investigation. Live in Durham, I'm Derek Lewis, CBS 17 News. <laughs> this doesn't seem to be bothering you. I know, it doesn't bother you. Why did you do what you did? I don't know. I don't know. He said he owed me some money. He owed you money? Yeah. What happened there is? He, uh, he, uh, this is what, I'll tell you guys what happened. I said, man, where's the money at from my phone? And uh, he's like, I ain't got your money for your phone. And then he had a knife in his hand. And then he pulled a knife on me. I said, man, where's my damn money at from my phone? He pulled a knife on me. And uh, he, he started uh, trying to, you know, he pulled a knife on me. And he started pull, trying to kill me with the knife, so I was defending myself. And like I got scratch wounds on my hand. On my hand, look, you see my hand? He just cut me. And I was like getting, trying to get the knife, wrestling him down to the ground. I ended up just beating him up with my fist. And so you, you know, did I beat him, What did you do? I beat him up my fist. My fist. I beat him down. I beat him up. That's what killed him. My fist. You killed him. Do you feel sorry for him now? Not really. You don't. You don't <laughs> feel sorry because you killed him? Yeah, I do feel sorry because I killed him. But it's not. I shouldn't. It shouldn't happen if he was just having money. Or he shouldn't have pulled a knife on me. So no. you feel like you were justified in doing this? Yeah, it's self-defense. He pulled a knife on me. That's what caused the attack in him. Why did you leave him there? Why didn't you call the police? I passed out. You, were you drunk? No, I took my medications. I'm, 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 I'm a mental illness patient, and uh, he's got my medications. You know my medicine. There's something wrong with the black man's mind! There's something wrong with his mind! Away in Virginia Beach, Alex Jenkins is accused in the death of Jeannie Murphy. Now she was killed back in 2010 when police say he walked in on an armed robbery. Attending your side, Jason Marks was in court. Jason, a Jenkins was indicted years ago. Why did it take so long for this case to come to trial? <sighs> Well, the case went cold for a while, and it wasn't until Jenkins actually came forward with the information prosecutors say they needed that he was actually involved. Now, today, the jury heard from a clerk who was there the night of that robbery, and they watched video, surveillance video, of the moments Jeannie Murphy was gunned down. Almost eight years after a Virginia Beach woman was killed, her family's finally getting to see the person prosecutors say is responsible on trial. It was December 19, 2010. That's when two suspects held up the clerk at a convenience store on South Lynn Haven Road. This morning, the jury trial for Alex Jenkins began. 
The clerk told the jury two men wearing all black with their faces covered with guns walked into the store. They shoved a gun in the clerk's face and demanded money. A few minutes later, Jeannie Murphy walked in to buy beer. When she saw what was happening, she tried to run out of the store, but was shot twice in the back. She died from her injuries right there on the mat in front of the door. The case went cold for several years, until a big break in 2014. That's when Jenkins, who was serving time for another robbery at a prison in the western part of the state, asked to talk to guards. He told them that he knew something about a robbery and murder in Virginia Beach. He said he was there along with his friend, Chamonte Hines. He told prison guards Hines was the one who pulled the trigger. Defense attorneys told the jury Jenkins only told the guards that because he thought it would help reduce his sentence on the other robbery charge. Instead, he was charged with robbery and murder for his part in the junior market crime. <laughs> now, Tremonte Hines was actually indicted on the crime uh, late February, and then I had a chance to talk with Jenkins from inside the Virginia Beach Jail. He told me that police have the wrong guy. Of course, that will now be up to the jury. The trial is expected to take anywhere between two to three days. That's the latest here at Virginia Beach. Jason Marks, 10 on your side. One Clayton County parent says a Fox 5 I-Team investigation into their school police department turned her stomach. Now the investigation revealed Clayton County Schools has the highest percentage of cops with troubled work histories of any major metro school district. Well, Fox 5 I-Team reporter Randy Travis returns now with new details of how some of those officers got jobs protecting children. Randy? Right, residents today, in light of last month's school shooting in Parkland, Florida, we examined the work backgrounds of more than 300 Metro school police officers. After all, they're under even more pressure now to keep our children safe. So how did Clayton wind up with so many cops who had problems in their previous jobs? You all knowingly know these officers have backgrounds and y'all are still letting them in the schools with these kids. Clayton County parents like Isioma Abata still can't shake what they saw. A Fox 5 item investigation that discovered nearly one third of the school police force was made up of officers who had been fired from previous departments or resigned before they could be fired. Like Sergeant Freddie Davis, according to his official state work history, in 2012, Davis quit the DeKalb County Police Department in lieu of termination after admitting he had sex on duty in his patrol car. He later got in trouble in Douglasville after multiple girls or young women complained he was flirting with them on duty. Derek and Valerie Wainwright telling investigators Davis followed their daughter in his patrol car as she headed home from her fast food job. And we're talking about a 16-year-old kid. This is a grown man. According to the Internal Affairs report, Davis admitted telling another woman he admired her lips and said he would like to kiss her. Yet the day after he resigned from Douglasville last August, Clayton County Schools hired Freddie Davis and made him a sergeant. I don't see how they allow that. It's not right. That's foolishness to me. The one about the officer saying that he wanted to kiss the girl's lips, that was disgusting. Um, that really made me mad. Like, it just turned my stomach. Clayton County also hired Ernest Mitchell, a cop whose official state file shows he had been fired from one job and quit before he could be fired from two other police departments. He's also the man in the blue shirt being arrested on road rage allegations in 2013. The victim telling state troopers Mitchell had waved a gun at him. The Coweta County solicitor tells the Fox 5 I team the charges were dropped because the victim could not come back to Georgia to testify, and it was unclear in which county the incident happened. Do they know about your work history before they hired you, sir? Clayton County also hired Joshua Goss, who quit instead of being fired from MARTA after he was accused of pretending to be three different people, all women, including a Gwinnett police officer. Because of those allegations, the state filed a request with the AG to revoke his certification to be a cop. Just as troubling, parents tell us, is the fact that the school superintendent would not explain why these officers were hired in the first place, including two of them who were hired on his watch. Dr. Morcise Beasley says he does not comment on personnel issues. But according to the officer's personnel file, in some cases, the county did not do a thorough background check. Ernest Mitchell explained the road rage incident had since been dismissed and expunged when he applied for the school job. There's no evidence in his file that anyone contacted the Coweta County solicitor to learn the charges had been dropped because the victim could not appear. And in Freddie Davis's case, Police Chief Thomas Trawick told internal affairs investigators he thought Davis had gotten in trouble in DeKalb County for an excessive force incident, not for having sex in his patrol car. When asked if he was aware of any sexual misconduct allegations from Davis's past employers, Chief Trawick said, I'm not aware of any. Even volunteers for the school have to do a background check, so why wouldn't you check for yourself and not just take his word? Like, that's 
That's crazy to me. Clayton County Fire Davis, the same day we began asking questions. The superintendent says the timing was incidental and they are dealing with the larger issues internally. Parents have high expectations of their children, right? At a series of community forums, Dr. Beasley was asked by one parent why he would not talk about the cops mentioned in our investigation. Chief Trawick would not give us any answers either. You couldn't tell us if you knew that these folks had checkered histories before you hired them? Well, I'm not going to discuss personnel matters, okay? So that's not. It, it, it would be most appropriate for me not to discuss personnel matters. But thank you for making the inquiry. Just and you have a good evening. Just want to make sure they had a chance to respond, Chief, because okay, it was on your watch when these folks were hired. All right, thank, thanks a lot, sir. If we don't want answers, we should get those answers. And for you to not answer us, it makes it seem like you're trying to hide something. So what are you hiding? Well, get this. Another officer on our list accidentally texted his supervisor a video of himself having sex. Mm. Clayton County School suspended him for one day. The officer apologized and said the person he was having sex with in the video was not a Clayton County student. So there's that. That can't be the standard. This is crazy. So the superintendent would not respond to your inquiries about this. He would only say, uh, Sine, that uh, he's going to handle this internally. We're going to take care of this internally. I'm not going to comment any further. Well, they haven't been handling it up to now, it doesn't sound like. And as the parent made the case, you know, volunteers are vetted when they come into the schools. Mm -hmm. You would think the officers would be similarly vetted. How do you not know that a man you're hiring was in trouble and lost his job, in essence, for having sex with someone in a patrol car while he was on duty. How do you miss that when you're checking the background of a cop? I don't get that. And the crime itself was shocking. An 11-year-old and her 15-year-old brother killed inside their Clayton County home. And now a teacher is charged in this case. Police say the deaths of Davion and Tatiana Coates were gang-related, but the brother and sister were not the intended targets. Another 15-year-old staying in their home was who the gunman was after when Davion and Tatiana were murdered. This was back in October 2016. We've learned last week police have made several arrests in this case. Fox 5's Portia Bruna joining us now. Portia, one of these suspects, a DeKalb County teacher. Yes, indeed. And, you know, Caitlin, this was one of those stories, uh, one of those crimes that really bothered investigators here in Clayton County, as well as the community that was left shocked when those two children, just 11 and 15 years old, were killed. Now, take a look at this mugshot. We just got it from the Clayton County Jail. This person is identified as Michael Deshaun White. He is charged with malice murder, and Clayton County Police uh, made that charge on Friday after Clayton's fugitive squad members uh, escorted him out of his fifth grade classroom at Tony Elementary school which is in DeKalb County school officials and DeKalb tell me that there was he was arrested without incident did not have cuffs and was quietly taken from the building now back here in Clayton County I can tell you this happened in October 2016 and Caitlin as you mentioned some folks unknown uh, at the time stormed into a home here in Clayton County aiming for a 15 year old uh, but ended up shooting a 15 uh, 15 year old Davian Coates and his 11 year old sister Tatiana uh, this case has gone on for obviously more than a year now. We've learned last week there were several arrests, including this DeKalb County school teacher. We're working to put together more information about who else is under arrest and what charges they're facing and trying to get more information about the role they believe this fifth grade DeKalb County elementary school teacher had in all of this. And we'll have that story in a full report coming up tonight on Fox 5 News at 5 and 6. And we're reporting live at the Clayton County Jail. Portia Bruner, Fox 5 News. Early Sunday morning, surveillance cameras capture a fast food freakout at a Glendale McDonald's. You see a teenage worker slammed into a fryer, hitting her head. She then falls to the ground. From this angle, you can't see the suspect, but police say four other cameras can and capture these very clear pictures. This all started in the drive-thru. A customer was disgruntled over her order. A woman tosses her food back through the window, saying they got the wrong order. Over uh, a breakfast sandwich, and really that's all this was. Uh, she, she felt that she got the wrong sandwich. The suspect comes inside the restaurant, making a scene and swearing. Police say the manager fixed her order and even refunded her money, but she snatched the cash and walked right behind the register. Management did everything they could, they did everything right, and it just wasn't good enough for this person. While the suspect was yelling at the manager, the 17-year-old worker tried to intervene. That's when the suspect shoved her into the fryer. Police say she'll be paying a high price all over that breakfast sandwich. We're probably looking at uh, felony assault charges and possibly physical abuse of a child because our victim is only 17 years old. That's a huge bitch! And Michael Carroll deputies say the 35-year-old refused to drop a knife and charged at them when he was shot. After seeing the deadly shooting firsthand from a Greenville County deputy's body camera, Jermaine Massey's family 
thinks otherwise. Jermaine, drop the knife. A phrase Jermaine's sister, Tamika Gordon, says Greenville County deputies used repeatedly to try and calm her brother's nerves. It's like Jermaine was in another world. He, he wasn't there. His mind was not there. Gordon and other family members, 35-year-old Jermaine Massey, got to see his final moments at a home on 3rd Avenue through a Greenville County deputy's body camera. Every aspect was unjustified. From the moment deputies say they found Massey with a knife, begged him to put it down, then tased him, Tamika Gordon says the video tells a different story. As, as one deputy described it, it, it almost turned into kind of a dance where the gentleman would go one way uh, with the weapon and they would try to go back the other way uh, to avoid him. Uh, and that's when they deployed less lethal options um, that unfortunately failed. I could see that it was a knife, so I, I, I can't say for sure that's what it was. Massey's family called him a workaholic, mentally taxed, after working 15-hour days, seven days a week. Him being stopped by the police just added fuel to him already being depressed. Massey's family believes deputies drove him to become mentally unstable. Like a, oh, I don't know, like, I guess like, Scream. like he uh, screams like a, a meltdown, I guess. I'm, I guess that's what it was, a meltdown. I never seen him like that, so. Gordon says the video showed her brother pacing back and forth. They just kept saying drop the knife. Never nobody nobody never said, Jermaine, what's wrong? Unfazed by the tasing. He took a step, and that's when the guns went off. What was seen is clearly excessive force, police brutality, and racial profiling. Massey's family frustrated, upset over losing a loved one. His sister hurt. There was nothing she could do. He was crying out for help, and I wasn't there to help him. We have asked for any 911 calls and video related to this deputy involved shooting. The sheriff's office referred us to SLED. SLED says they won't release anything until after their investigation. He also reached out to the 13th Circuit solicitor. We have yet to hear back. Special thanks to GP Videos contributor, Baltimore's Jamal Trademark. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Also, follow us on the usual media for more interesting information like this.
channel moderators are Jer Shacks and Michael Thomas. Thanks for your diligence and dedication. Fight their asses!